Hi, for this video what we are going to do is we are going to solve a quadratic equation by factoring. For this one, we have a leading coefficient that is not 1. That's what the ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 means, is that we have a leading coefficient other than 1 in the front. Remember with factoring, what we are doing is we are trying to figure out which two binomial expressions did I multiply together to get this value. Because when I do that, I can use the zero product property, which says that if I have one factor times another factor and the product is zero, one of those products must be zero. So to do this, it's a little bit different than when you do have um, a one in front. When you have a one in front, you simply look at the last number to figure out what would I multiply to add up to get the middle number. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to take the first term, so the 2 times the 3, so if I take 2 times 3, I'm going to multiply those together, I get 6. So this time what we want to do is find two factors that multiply together to give me the product of the first term and the last term that also add up to be the middle term. So we want it to add up to be negative 5. With this one, you have to be very careful because of the signs. So what we want is we want to find um, two negative factors. We know that this has to be negative because a negative times a negative gives me a positive, And a negative plus a negative gives me a negative. So with this, there are two, and you really have to be careful with this with the 6 because there are two that will get you to 5. Both 6 and 1 will get you to 5 if one of them is positive and one of them is negative. But since both of these have to be negative, we would use negative 2 and positive 3. And if you watched my other video that showed how to factor this with a leading coefficient of 1, we just simply put those numbers over here. Well, this time, if we put those numbers over here, if I just put the values um, if I put both the negative 2 and the negative 3, when I multiply those together, it gives me 6, but I need 3 at the end. So what we have to do is we're going to take, we know that we had to multiply something together to get x squared. So we know that both of these are going to have an x in them. And we're going to look at this number right here and figure out, do either of these numbers have something in common with that first number? This number right here is 2. I can take negative 2 and divide it by 2 also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an x in front of this one because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and I'm going to divide this one by 2 also. So I had to distribute a 2 into this equation to get the negative 2. For the second one, since 2 and 3 don't have anything in common, I would just simply write them both in this... Um, parenthesis. So we always want to check to make sure that we're on the right track and with this one it's pretty easy. Um, when I will make sure to do some with harder numbers, this one's a pretty easy one. Um, but if you look at it, if I take and check to make sure this works out, x times 2x gives me the 2x squared that I needed for the first term, so that works. The negative 1 times the negative 3 gives me the positive 3 that I needed at the end, so that also works. And then if I take the outside term, I get negative 3, and the inside term gives me negative 2, and that's the two numbers that we added together to get the negative 5, so this works. We then take both factors, and I know you could do this much quicker, but I'm just trying to make sure that you understand where I'm getting all of the numbers. So then we would just set this up where they're equal to each other. We would say x equals 1. Or we would move the 3 to the other side and we get 2x equals positive 3. And then we would divide it and we end up with 3 halves. You can leave it like this or you could write it as 1.5. Either one is acceptable. Remember that you must always check your solutions to make sure that they make sense in the original equation. So let's check the 1 first because it's easier. So we would just do 2 times 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus 3. And we're asking ourselves, does this give us 0? So for this, 1 squared is 1 times 2 gives us 2. Minus 5 gives us negative 3 
plus 3 does indeed give me 0, so we can say that this is an equal expression. 0 equals 0, so this works. The second one is a little bit harder to check because it's a fraction, and I know um, most people don't like to deal with fractions. Fractions don't have to be scary. So when we plug this in, like I said before, with checking, you're always just plugging in your value for x. And then we're just going to see, does this give us 0? Is this a true statement? So I would start by squaring our fraction term first. This gives us 2 times 9 fourths, because 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, minus 5 times 3 halves, and I could have simplified that there. Um, for the next one, what I would do is I would distribute this 2 just to the top number, or I can divide first. I'm going to go ahead and divide first because 2 over 4 reduces. So this becomes 9 halves. If I would have done the 2 times 9 first, I would have had 18 fourths, which also reduces to 9 halves. 5 times 3 gives me 15 over 2 plus 3, and we're still asking ourselves, does this equal 0? So remember with adding fractions, what you would do is you would add the top numbers as long as the denominators are the same since they're both 2, I would just add these two together. So I really am doing 9 plus negative 15 or 9 minus 15, which gives me negative 6. And negative 6 divided by 2 is really just negative 3. So negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0, so this does work. If this is difficult for you, you can always just plug it into your calculator to make sure it works. But just keep in mind, make sure that you always check your solutions to see if they work in the original problem, because sometimes we make mistakes when we're doing our computations. As always, thanks for watching.